API stands for an Application Programming Interface. It's a set of functions that allow an application to interact with external applications, microservices, or data. In other words, APIs allow applications to talk to and interact with one another. Examples of an API Did you ever try logging into an app or a website and did you notice the login using Facebook, Twitter, Google, GitHub? It makes login very convenient. But how does it really work? When you click on login using Facebook or Twitter, the apps, instead of logging in to users' actual social media accounts, applications with this functionality leverage these platforms' APIs to authenticate the user with each login. To explain this better, let us take a familiar example. Imagine you are sitting at a table in a restaurant with a menu of choices to order from. The kitchen is the part of the system that will prepare your order. What is missing is the critical link to communicate your order to the kitchen and deliver your food back to your table. That's where the waiter or API comes in. The waiter is the messenger or API that takes your request or order and tells the kitchen, the system, what to do. Then the waiter delivers the response back to you. In this case, it is the food. APIs control access to resources. APIs are also used to control access to hardware devices and software functions that an application may not necessarily have permission to use. That's why APIs often play a big role in security. If you want to capture photos or video from the iPhone's camera, you don't have to write your own camera interface. You use the camera API to embed the iPhone's built-in camera in your app. If APIs didn't exist to make this easy, App developers would have to create their own camera software and interpret the camera hardware's inputs. But Apple's operating system developers have done all this hard work, so the developers can just use the camera API to embed a camera, and then get on with building their app. APIs go beyond making better customer experiences. They can also improve internal processes, Maybe you want all your drivers to record their mileage and gasoline costs in a certain way. Again, your developers could potentially use the Google Maps API to create an internal phone app that lets drivers easily track how many miles they travel each day. But why a company like Google would let the public use its mapping technology? It is because APIs can be very profitable for different companies. API-Driven Architecture API-driven development is the practice of designing and building APIs first, then creating the rest of an application around them. In this way, API-driven development is different from traditional development strategies. Those usually include API design and implementation as one point on the development timeline, but that does not make it the first step in application production. For example, when it comes time to build the APIs, you might realize that one of your application services formats data in a way that makes it difficult to fit into your API. And as a result, you decide that redesigning that component in order to make it accessible via an API is not worth the effort. You thus end up with gaps in API accessibility. REST APIs use a simple URL and are lightweight to implement with almost any tool. Developers get a set of search and query tools with the REST API that helps them gain deeper access to a website's data. REST API stands for Representational State Transfer and is an architectural pattern for creating web services. REST is a rule set that defines best practices for sharing data between clients and the server. It's essentially a design style used when creating HTTP or other APIs that asks you to use CRUD function only, regardless of the complexity. REST applications use HTTP methods like GET, POST, DELETE, and PUT. REST emphasizes the scalability of components and the simplicity of interfaces.